Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. In this step-by-step -step tutorial, I'm going to show you how to bind single sheets of paper together. This method is called Japanese book binding or Japanese stab binding. It's a very, very easy method and you can adapt it in all sorts of different ways. You can have just a few holes, you can have a lot of holes like I have here. You can wrap the sides, you don't have to wrap the sides, you can do patterns, all sorts of things. But let's start with the basics. I have uh, the step-by-step -step instructions over here. So let's get started with the tutorial. Okay, so what I'm going to do is show you exactly what we're doing in this video. So when I do an actual project using my instructions here, all the details are going to make sense. So basically you have your papers, you have your holes punched, you start somewhere in the middle and then you're weaving through to that first hole. So you're here at the top hole and then you're going to go back through into that same hole to wrap the spine and you're holding all of the pages together and then you go back into the next available hole, you wrap the spine again and now we're at the hole where we started, so I'm going back in, wrapping the spine. And now we're doing the exact same thing on this side. So I'm going to weave through first to the last hole. And then come back to the center hole, wrapping the spine. Wrap the spine, go into the next available hole and wrap the spine. And this is what you end up with. So now when we do an actual project, all of these are going to make sense. At the end of the video, I will place these instructions side by side so you can take a screenshot. All right, let's get started with the project. Okay, so your very first step is to gather your pages and place them in order that you like. And you want to line them up nicely. So I've already done it for this one. And I'm going to do this one first and then we'll do this one here with some more holes. And I just want to let you know that in this one here, I do have some shorter pieces of paper, like this one, for example. They don't all have to be the same size. Just because what we do with the junk journals and stuff, we have all different types of paper. So I just wanted to let you know ahead. So we'll come back to this one and I'm just going to show you the very basics with this little one. And I'm using paper that's all exactly the same size. And I actually have some vellum here that's going to be my cover. I have some vellum at the back that's going to be my back cover. I didn't have front and back cover for all of my projects, but that's just what I'm doing for this one. And I've got some different tea dyed papers in there. And now I'm going to place them nicely like this. I want them all aligned and I'm going to use bulldog clips or paper clips to hold them in place. That's step number two. Okay, so I'll make sure everything is nice and aligned and I'm just going to hold them in place with this. That's pretty good because I don't want things moving around as I'm binding. Okay, so the next step is to mark your holes. It depends on how many holes you want. Here you can see I've only got three holes. Here I've got 17. I think the most important thing is that you want them lined up. Here I have four, so odd number here, even number here. So it really, you know, it's all up to you. And I'm going to do maybe, let's say three holes on this little one, and I'm going to find a center. All right, so let's say I want this to be my spine and I'm going to find the center and mark some holes. So you want about maybe one centimeter or about half an inch. You know, it, it's really up to you how far away from the edge of the paper you wanna go. Here, I've only got one centimeter and here I've got an, uh, an inch. So you can adapt it any way you want. So first thing I'm going to do is find the center and I might just go a, a centimeter from the edge and I'm going to mark the hole there. And now I'm going to find, maybe I'll go about half an inch from the edge on both sides. So I'm just doing three holes and I know you can't see on this paper, but there's my center here. And then aligned in the same line, I have a hole here, which is half an inch from the side edge, I mean. And then I have half an inch here from the side edge. And I'm just going to punch those holes. I'm using my pokey tool or an awl. You can use a thumbtack, whatever you have handy that can poke some holes and just go right through that paper all the way through. 
you can stack as many pages together as you want. I have probably about maybe, let's see. So I have 14 pages in this one. And I know you can't see the holes there, but you can see them here. Those are my three holes. So the main point here is you want your holes, uh, you know, evenly spaced out. But I guess they don't have to be. You can have binding that looks like this. You can have two holes up the top and then you can have like three holes down the bottom here. And when you're done, it will look like this like that so really you can play around all right for step four you're going to load your needle with the thread that you're going to use I will use some embroidery floss and you need about four times the height of the book so one two three four and I'll just go a little bit more just in case if you're doing 17 holes like I did here you need more thread I think I had about six times the height of the book and it was too much so um, I'm not entirely sure you know exactly how much you would need for 17 holes but probably about six times the height or seven times the height just to be sure here we go my needle is loaded okay so for this binding you are not starting from the covers you're actually going to start binding from the middle of the book so step number five is to find the approximate middle. I'm not even going to count. I'm just going to go in here. That's the approximate middle of my book. And I'm going to mark this page with a sticky note because I will need it at the end. And now I'm starting my binding from the inside, from that middle. And I'm going to the outside of my front cover. Take my needle right through. And you want to leave about maybe a seven centimeter or I don't know, three inches, four inches of thread in there. I'm going to tuck it in there for now. Okay, and we're already up to number seven. And now the needle is going to move along to the top hole. And this will be so very easy because we're only doing three holes. So I'm going to the top hole and all the way through to the back. If you had more holes, you would keep weaving through until you get to this very first hole. And then once you're here at the very first hole, you want to wrap the spine. So you wrap around the spine and you just go back through the same hole. See that there? That's what we want. Now we're here at the back. We're going to go through the middle hole at the back, all the way to the front. And now wrap again. And go back through that same hole I'm keeping my thread quite th tight, as tight as I can without, you know, ripping through the paper. So this is already step nine because I'm back at the hole where I started. When you have more holes, this will make more sense. But uh, in my next one that I'm going to do, I'm going to have more holes. So you will see what I mean. So now we're step number 10 and I'm repeating the same thing on the other side. I'm going into that last hole all the way to the back. I'm wrapping it around going back into the same hole here we go and now I'm back at the starting hole so you can see everything is done I'm going to take these off because it will be easier don't need them anymore and now because this hole is already wrapped you can see we've already wrapped this uh, the spine here we don't need to wrap it again instead we're taking our needle but not all the way through this is where this comes in handy because I know exactly where my tail is and this is the, pretty, uh, the, the hardest part of this binding. So now I have to go through the hole, but not all the way through, only to that middle to meet that tail that I have here. So I kind of do it by feel. I put my needle through and then I'm kind of feeling for the needle. And you can see that needle has come through. There we go, take it through. We don't need the needle anymore. Here we go, both tails are inside and now I have to tie a knot. Maybe get the help of my scissors here so that you can see. I'm just tying a knot. I'm going to do a double knot. You can do a bow. I might do a bow as well, a double knot and a bow. And there we go, that's done. So I probably overcomplicated things with the, all of these extensive notes here and this paper that's got too much going on so you can't really see the binding. But I'm going to do another project here and you'll be able to see a little bit better. Okay, so like I said before, uh, your pages don't all have to be the same size. You can see this one's shorter, but I want my front and back cover to be exactly the same. 
So I just used two pieces of scrapbook paper and that's going to be my front and back cover. You can see this page here I've left longer because I want to make a pocket out of this page. So I've just left it longer and then I'll come back to that once I'm done. So the first thing I need to do is get them all in order and place my bulldog clips on the sides. And now I'm going to find the center. And like I said, you don't have to start from the center. Here you can see I didn't start from the center. I just marked my holes evenly spaced. So if you want even uh, number of holes, then you know, you don't have to start from the center. If you want odd number of holes, it's really up to you. Here's my center. And I'm just thinking how many holes do I want here? I have decided to go with three centimeters apart. And I'm going to punch those holes and you'll be able to see them better. I may have forgotten here to write that you need to poke the holes, but I'm sure you know what I mean. And here we go. I have seven holes in total. So once again, I'm going to use my embroidery floss and I'll go with maybe five times the height just to be sure. Now I'm finding somewhere in the middle of the book. Let's just go approximately about there. Put my little sticky note in there because I'll need it later. And step number six, I'm starting my binding from that middle page there. And I'm leaving a tail. I'm going to tuck it in there. And now I'm going to the top of my spine here and I'm going to go hole by hole. So I'm going to go in to the next hole all the way through. And now I'm here at the back and I'm going to go in the next hole on the back all the way through. And keep moving to my last hole and it just so happens that this one here is my last hole. So first we are weaving and then we are wrapping. So here if you want to wrap this part here, I'll show you what I mean. See the difference between these two? They both have three holes. This one here is wrapped. And this one here isn't wrapped here. I think I prefer this method here, but let's say if you wanted to wrap, I'm going to wrap here so that you can see what I mean. Go back in the same hole and now you want to wrap the spine. So you go back again into the same hole. And this is what you get. So now we have to go back to this hole because we want to wrap it. But your needle is at the back. so. You're going back into this hole here. Try and keep it tight. You wrap and then you go back again to that same hole. Now you can see this here is a little bit loose. That's because that's the tail bit that's on the inside. That will be tightened up at the end where we make that knot. So I'm going back in here. All the way to the back and then wrap. And I also wanted to point something out as well as we're going. If you're using embroidery floss like I am, as you know, embroidery floss has all these strands. So it's not just one strand, it's like six strands. So when you're binding, try not to go through the strands, if that makes sense. You know, try not to go through the strands, try to kind of maneuver, you know, it's to the side because if you go through the strands then this will happen. Or you can just stick to say waxed thread or something like that. Something that's just one thread rather than six together. All right and now I am back to the starting hole. So this is my starting hole here. You can see that's where I started but I'm going all the way through and now I'm going to wrap it. There we go. All right, so we're finished step nine and I have just wrapped the starting hole. This is loose because that tail is on the inside. So once I pull that tight, that will be fine. So one thing to remember to make it easier, you start somewhere in the middle, you weave, weave, weave to the end, and then you wrap, wrap, wrap back to the middle, and then you weave, weave, weave to the end, wrap, wrap, wrap back to the middle. So now that I'm in the middle, step number 10, we are repeating what we did here. We're just doing the same on the other side. So I'm going to weave. Here I am at the last hole. And now because I did it up here, I'm going to wrap my spine on the side and then around the spine. 
So I'm gonna go on the side and now I'm gonna go back again into the same hole here we go and just keep everything tight and now I'm just going back to the center so back into the the next hole that's available go through so I'm wrapping the spine and going through the same hole again and now I'm going back to the next available hole which is over here now I'm here at the back I'm gonna wrap the spine you don't have, actually have to physically wrap the spine you just take your needle and go back through the same hole and pull tight and you can see that all of my holes are done everything is wrapped so now step 11 I'm actually back at the starting hole here and I'm not taking it all the way to the front because everything's finished so I just need to find the tail end which is over here where I marked it maybe I'll pull that tight a little bit so it tightens here and now I'm going to take my needle through this is where you kind of have to shimmy the needle a little bit so that it meets you in there kind of on an angle like this you know here we go there's my needle coming through And the tail ends meet somewhere on the inside of the book and now I'm just going to tie a double knot here to keep everything in place and you can see I'm left over with too much thread so maybe even four times the height of the book was enough for these seven holes and there we go and there's my bound book now all I have to do is I want to make a pocket over here so I'm just going to fold that in tuck a little something in here little journaling spot in there paper clip charm on a paper clip and here we go so when you're using a book like this you would fold this down so you have a crease here and just keep folding the pages down which i don't really like to do until i start using the book so now i'm just going to show you my projects that i did uh, just to give you some ideas on all the different things you can do so this one we've done together. This one here, I just bound tea dyed papers and, and all sorts of different, you know, lined papers and things like that. Maybe I have about 20-ish pages in here. I've got some wellum and I've got this expanding one here. And then I just decorated the front. So the cover is just copy paper that's been tea dyed. And I think that I prefer to have more holes than just three holes because I find there's a little bit of gaping if, if it's quite a large page and you only have three holes. So for example, in this one here, this is Edith Holden page that I used for, a uh, for my covers on the front and back. And here I have five holes and I feel like that's better. I think five holes is probably better than three holes on a larger project. This one here, from memory, I think I have about 17 holes. And to be honest, I actually prefer this look here. So I prefer less holes. This seems a little bit too busy. But it's, it's not bad. I don't mind it actually looking at it now. And that's my back. And then again, I have all sorts of different papers in there. You know, different sizes and, and types and things like that. Music paper, some vellum pages, all sorts of things. This little booklet, this is pretty cool, you know, when you have little offcuts from projects that you've done and, you know, you can sew, sew it through with your sewing machine or you can just bind it like this. And I did a little snippet at the front and I think it's a really fun little booklet. This one we've done together. I can't really see the binding here, so maybe a different type of a cover would have been nice or maybe a different uh, colored thread. And then this one here is a wider one so i did this also wider that's about half an inch whereas these ones are about maybe a centimeter i know i'm using two different metrics here but let's see this one's it's a little bit more than half an inch it's actually three quarters of an inch from the spine so anyway you can just play around with that sort of stuff i think once you sort of know the basics of this type of binding you can do really anything you want I really hope that everything makes sense in this tutorial. It was a little bit difficult to be uh, clear because there's a lot of maneuvering of the pages and turning the pages this way and that. So 
I'm really hoping that it wasn't confusing and I hope that the instructions will help. They're very detailed and I'm about to put them side by side so you can take a screenshot. All right, so this is the first two. I hope that seeing the video and reading the instructions makes perfect sense. I think maybe just reading the instructions on their own, you know, might be a little bit confusing. Here's the next two, but hopefully the two together will make perfect sense. If you do have any questions, please let me know. Write your comments in the comment section. Let me know what you think of this project. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Okay, so just in case you're one of the half percent of people who are interested in my nail polish, I thought I'll share with you what I do. So for this particular nail polish that I have on today, these are the colors that I use. I always mix my colors. So this time around, I went with brown and then I got over it with some gold. And then I always finish off with a glitter nail polish. This is just some cheap glitter nail polish. Glitter nail polish makes the polish last longer. And then I finish off with this Sally Hansen Insta Dry Top Coat. It dries everything very, very quickly. The whole process takes me about maybe 45 minutes. And I do it really late at night while watching TV and I enjoy it. So I always end up with a different kind of a nail polish because I mix and match. I'm not entirely sure that I'm happy with this one because it has kind of like a greenish tinge to it. But that's the fun part, you know. It always ends up looking slightly different and I get different colors mixing and matching. So there we go. All right. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.